Hello my fertility friends, I'm Anne and in this video I tell you all about your cervix and how to get pregnant with this information about your cervix. First big question is, can the cervix indicate ovulation? Okay, I start with an example. You know, when your ovulation is maybe in two weeks, then your cervix is very closed and it's hard. You can feel it uh, with your finger and think, okay, it's uh, really far away, my ovulation. And every day the ovulation is closer and closer. First it's hard, then it becomes softer and softer and more open. And these signs you can use for to get pregnant because when you have a very open and soft cervix, then you can say, okay, it's my fertile days and have sex. Yeah? But you cannot be sure 100% because maybe you have an unregular cycle, you know, in like waves up and down and maybe your cervix goes open and then hard and open and closed open maybe yeah it could be but if you want to be sure that this is your ovulation with the cervix then it's a good idea when you observe your cycle with the symptom tamar method with your body temperature your mucus and your cervix So, and how can you check your cervix by yourself? It's very easy. You take a finger. Most women take uh, the middle finger because it's longer. And then you can observe your cervix. You can observe three different things. The firmness, the opening and the position. For most women, squatting is the best position to reach your cervix. Another important thing is that you make it always with the same finger and also nearly at the same time you know, on the day, maybe always in the morning or always in the evening. And then you can feel something with your finger and maybe you can reach your cervix very well or not so good. When your cervix is very high, then it's not so good to reach with your finger. And when it's not so high, then it's very good to reach from your vagina with your finger. So, and then you feel with your finger yeah, on the cervix and you can only feel this area of the cervix. Yeah? can also feel around something but important is this in the middle and the middle one there is in reality <laughs> a little slit uh, like your mouse when your mouse is closed then also you can feel with your finger this slit and when you open your mouse then you can feel like an O, a hole, and maybe the hole is so big you can put your finger in it. Okay, and the difference between soft and hard, you can feel like your nose it's hard and your lips are soft. Yeah? That's uh, nearly the same difference between nose and lips. So, and then you can write down uh, this information you learned about your cervix. That what you feeling on the day, you can write in your cycle chart or you use a suitable fertility awareness 
app. And for the beginning, it's easier for you when you only write down or put in your app if your cervix is open or closed and if it's soft or hard. The position is not so important for the beginning. Which is the better one, cervical mucus or cervix? To interpret your fertile days. If you use the symptothermal method, you, you can choose body temperature with cervical mucus or basal body temperature with cervix. And both it's equal to interpret your fertile days and infertile days. But the question is, which one is the better one? And I can say most of women say the cervical mucus is easier to understand, easier to feel, easier to evaluate and interpret. But all women say the same, yes, because 10% of women use the cervix and in combination with the basal body temperature and say this is the easiest for them. You can say maybe that the cervical mucus work is more work than the cervix work. <laughs> because the cervical mucus you observe the whole day. Yeah? You s every time you go to the toilet you can feel and interpret your cervical mucus. And then you take the best quality of the day yeah, from your cervical mucus and that's the one you write down in your cycle chart. But the cervix you only feel once a day. That is the biggest difference between the cervical mucus and the cervix. So when is the best time to start monitoring your cervix? Of course, you can start when you want. Yeah. But I think it's very easy when you start around your ovulation and that's the time when your cervical mucus is stretchy and transparent because around this time and when your ovulation is then your cervix is open and soft. And during you feel your cervix and then you think oh that was the thing that was soft and this is open, oh, like your mouth. This is a really a good start because after your ovulation it's really a big difference from the soft open to hard and closed. This is only um, some days after your ovulation and it's really clear different. So the next question is can the cervix indicate menstruation? One to two days before your menstruation, your cervix is again open and soft and you can also feel it. Yeah? And the opening, it's like on the time when you have the ovulation. And that's because the menstrual blood wants to come out and that's the preparation of your body that it could easily go out from your uterus. I think it's very hard to say when is your next uh, menstruation only because you feel your cervix and with your finger and say hmm, it's open, it was not open, soft or hard. Because I said it also on the beginning of this video, maybe you have some waves in your cycle. It's not really sure if it's really because of the menstruation. And that's why I think it makes more sense when you look the whole cycle and you observe other body signs of your cycle. Maybe your basal body temperature and some cervical mucus. Yeah? And then you can see Oh, yeah, maybe it's really because my menstruation starts in one or two days. Now my conclusion about the cervix. 
I think the cervix is really a very good and important sign of your body and of your cycle. But when you really want to know when your ovulation is, then you have to observe also your basal body temperature in combination with your cervix. You cannot clearly see it only with the cervix observation. If you really want to get pregnant, then I can say to you, make both and use the symptothermal method. And this was my video for you about the cervix. Have a lot of fun with it. That was your end and that's the end.